So look who we got here today. Yeah, stranger. Yeah. yeah. I usually, I'm usually on that side. Yeah, I know, but we, we need some help on the <laughs> specifics of this. So what are we talking about today? It's a C500. I'll tell you what I think is interesting about this camera is that you can shoot RAW, you can shoot, uh, can you shoot 2K? You can shoot 4K RAW, you can shoot 2K at RGB 444 and also in 422. And then also just like a, the C300, you can shoot an MXF compressed format. Well, that's just it. If you're a production house, you know, I mean, uh, you have several cameras in one here rather than having to own all these different cameras as right. well. So uh, that alone would make it, you know, where I would spend a little extra money and, and go for this camera. So we've talked about, you know, the C300, C100. We know the features of that. So this camera basically can do all that. Let's talk about what's unique about this camera. And that is its feature acquisition, which is its rawness. <laughs> rawness, right. <laughs> so in the C300, there was a grip there. Now you have this dual 3G SDI box on the side. And so what that's going to allow you to do is to dump out data into recorders. Such and as the codex. Such as the codex. Um, but there's also several recorders coming out. Um, there's the Gemini 444. Um, then there's also S2. Their recorder is going to be working with the C500. And then also AJA will have a recorder, I believe, in December. Well, when we go to NAB, there's going to be 10 new recorders, I'm sure. It's like when we would do 4x5. It's always great to start with a big, thick negative, mm -hmm. you know, and be able to work backwards and have that resolution. Right. For special effects and stuff, it says you're sort of like protecting yourself for future. All right. So one of the things I had been talking about is sort of price, you know, and this camera kind of fits in with when you get the camera and the recorder and batteries, it's kind of almost identically in that epic range. Yeah, the camera itself, I think, is going to retail the high 20s, 26, 27. Mm -hmm. uh, a recorder like this is going to cost you about another 30. So you're looking at something around 55 to shoot 4K mm -hmm. RAW. One of the cool features about this camera is that it has a 2K mode. That 2K mode can go all the way up to 120 frames a second. Nice. So that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. When you're recording to an external recorder, it will also allow you to record a backup copy on the CF cards inside. So that's a nice feature. It also gives you sort of an editable backup. Yeah, I mean, that's nice. This way you've got something you can look at right away. Yeah. One of the new things that Canon's introducing with this is sort of a PL style mount that will work with their EF style lenses. This mount will allow you to put on both the L series lenses, which are Canon's high quality glass, um, but also their EFS series lenses, which are the cheaper lenses. Oh. So that opens up sort of like the range of, of lenses that you can put on this. It seems like a more solid cinema style mount. I thought it was a PL mount at first. Yeah, it looked like one. So when we did our shootout, we you know saw various different cameras and how flat they could get. In raw mode, yeah. I mean, the Epic and the Alexa obviously is incredibly, you know, has a super flat um, profile. What's the story with this camera? Um, this, this camera has the C-Log in it, um, and that's the... The C-Log is the, the format that they that Canon introduced with the C300, and so it's basically identical to that. It's, 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 it's a log mode, so it's going to look flat and sort of pasty, but it's going to give you that control to be able to, yeah, bring grade, yeah. Yeah, to grade the image the way you want. It's not going to bake it in. You're going to get a lot less uncompressed color with the RAW than you would recording onto the onboard cards. At its highest settings, the camera is dumping out 660 megabytes of data a second that's Whoa. going to a recorder. Wow. Which is way beyond the 50 megabits a second. That, that's like the highest that the, the CF cards can record. So we're talking about a huge jump in, in how much data you have available to you when you actually get into post. Now, you guys were out playing with the camera. When you use the camera, can it control the like the codex for instance yeah we did some initial testing with both the gemini 444 and the codex both of them can be set up so that they automatically record with even the record buttons on the camera or push record on our grip relocator so it's in yeah. your hands yeah, yeah. that's yeah. nice i mean one of the cool features i gotta say about the way you have this rigged out jens is that it you almost have to have it in this configuration because every one of these cameras is a block yeah which is not a very ergonomic thing. But the way you got this rigged out, again, it's looking like an ENG camera. It's, it's pretty balanced. Yeah, oh, it's comfortable. 
Yeah, I mean, very comfortable. So no matter what you do, like on the Red Epic side, you know, they have a lot of all this codex built into the camera, but you're still going to have to have something on the back end. You need to have this anyways. So whether you're going to do it with batteries or I don't know what you're going to be putting back there. All right. No, so, it's good. It's balanced. It feels good. What what kit is this? This is a Stinger kit. Now, for this camera, there's going to be two Stinger kits. There's going to be the one that just has the z light our weight on the back. Uh, for people who want to get into it and are probably using the camera primarily with its internal recording. But the version you're seeing here is our Stinger Plus. It really, instead of the dumb weight that would come with the original Stinger, it has the um, Swiss plate here that can accommodate the battery and different mounts for different external recorders. Now this battery plate here can power the codex, the camera, even the EVF if you want it, right? Yeah. The other one I have sitting here is our Predator. Uh, the Predator has the grip relocator so that you can get the grip and have the camera controls right at your fingertip here. And uh, this is a real low profile, um, you know, run and gun kind of rig. Yeah, this would be a real like documentary style yeah. uh, system. It gives you your three points of contact. You got here and your eye and then right. the hand down here and probably grabbing onto the lens or something. Now you could use this in the 1080p mode, but you could also have somebody, you, you could have a tethered recorder and in this case you could be doing raw if you need to get into a car and you got to jam yourself back into a window. A rig like this would be sure. perfect for that. Yeah, and that. so what else do you got? The Striker is very similar to the Predator except that it has just a plain grip down here. It's not the camera's grip and you'll start and stop the camera with its other uh, function buttons that are on the camera itself. Yeah, I think people need to know that on the C500, you can't use that grip Right, because it doesn't come with it. Correct. Yeah, there is no grip to remove and right. relocate. So that's an option. You have to buy that as an accessory. For this camera, for the C500, yeah. correct. Yeah. So our recoil rig is, uh, is the other option that I really like, actually, for this camera. The rods can go through the base plate, and if you wanted to, you can mount the recorder on the back over your shoulder in a nice tight package, uh, even shorter than the Stinger does. It's smaller than an ENG camera when you smash them together and you really don't need to get into the camera because you're probably going to be powering it from an outside battery source. So here you got a, a very lightweight, uh, compact, right on your shoulder, balanced rig. And you can focus it with one hand and you can control the camera with the other. Correct. So this is a pretty exciting camera. I uh, was actually quite surprised when we got it. Uh, I think it's great. I mean, it, it would meet a lot of needs, especially for what we do. It definitely gives you, it's a lot more versatile. It's the camera that everybody was hoping that the C300 would be, and, but I, in the back of their minds, they're like, don't worry, it's coming. Yeah, exactly. Just couldn't tell anybody. When we were in that audience there, yeah. everybody was thinking, oh, okay. Why can't it do raw? You say it's got 4K on the chip. <laughs> well, like, here it coming. is. Yeah. Here it is. <laughs> All right, well, it's here.